All right, so continuing on, and this is going to cover the bottom half of note sheet one, beginning on number 13. So the next part here, we're dealing with uh, layer styles. So when you have a layer and you press this FX button down here, this activates the layer styles. It's going to bring up a list of layer styles. You can also just double click out to the right of a layer, and that will bring up the layer styles box as well. So there's a lot of different layer styles that you can do. Um, stroke is probably the most common. A stroke is simply a border. If I check the box, it doesn't switch to the options for it. So you're going to want to click over here on the right-hand side to switch to the options. So now it says stroke. Notice that I can change the size. Um, on an inside stroke, it's pointed, but it goes on the inside. So if it's too big, it'll start to cover up your picture. On an outside, it'll go around the image, but eventually if it gets too big, it will round. And then this is where you can set the color. So if I wanted the color of his tongue to be the color of this, I can click on the color box. I could attempt to find the color, or I could just come and click on his little tongue. And then it chooses that exact color while this box is up. And when I hit OK, it'll be in there. You can add more than one uh, layer style. So I can come here and add a glow, for instance. Although this is a light background, so a glow is probably not the best option. A shadow would be. So I'll do an, a drop shadow. That goes around the outside edge. You mess with these to kind of change them. I've got my shadow color set at a blue, um, but you can see here where I can change the spread, which makes how fuzzy it is, and the size, which is how big it is on there. You can also change the opacity, how see-through it is, if you wanted it to be darker, for instance. Um, and you could add other things too. Another common one is bevel and emboss. That makes it look more like a button, kind of gives it a 3D, so the inside of this picture here you can see that uh, looks raised up a little bit, kind of like a, a button on a web page, maybe. Um, those are more often used with like a, a rectangle to make the rectangle look like a button. But that's what bevel and emboss does. It kind of makes it look 3D um, or like a button. So stroke, drop shadow. There's inner shadow, which would make the inside darker. You can see kind of how that darkens up in there. Um, don't use that one very often, but you can see how that does. There's lots of different ones in there. So again, you have to decide whether you want that inside or outside stroke based on whether you want pointed edges, understanding that it will take over some of your picture, and then if it's outside, it's going to affect how big that drop shadow needs to be. All right, when you press OK, it'll list all your layer styles below the layer. To disable a layer style, you can just turn the button off here. You can see how it's beveling the outside edge because that's an inside stroke um, right there. Or you can double click to bring that back up and uncheck any that you want to get rid of. So that's that. All right, to mirror an entire document. Um, to do that, you go to Image, Image Rotation, and flip the canvas. Remember, we said it sits on an invisible, invisible canvas. So if I flip the canvas horizontal, it would flip the whole thing horizontal, which is probably not the best thing to do. So I'm going to undo that by going to Edit and Step Backward, and I could do that multiple times. So in here, for instance, let me crop this down so I have this part of him. If I wanted to mirror his image, I can go to edit and, or image, image rotation, flip canvas, canvas horizontal, nice, turn the other way. Um, and then I've got that all nice and done. To tint an image, to make it look a different color, you use an image adjustment. Now adjustments are what we call destructive. When you do them, they're done. They're glued to the image and you can't turn them off like layer styles. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ones in here, but the main one we're going to look at is tinting. Use black and white because that allows you to choose a tint. It takes all the color out and then lets you choose the tint. So if I choose blue, then I can choose how much blue here on the bottom. And then hit OK. And then when I drag this one over, it's already going to have that added to it uh, from the get-go. But it won't be something I can undo because I brought it in already looking like that. Um, to resize an image before you bring it in, you would go to image and image size, much like we went to canvas size, but this would resize the image. And usually you might do that by percent. So if I wanted it to be 50% of the original, I can set it in percent here. It'll automatically size it down. And then when I pull it over, it won't be as big as it was the first time. Okay. Um, and then lastly, the other big thing here is how to mirror just that layer. So if I wanted to change just this layer, I can press Control-T again to get transforms, right-click, and then you'll see here flip horizontal. 
Just like we saw flip canvas horizontal to flip the entire canvas, flip horizontal will just flip this picture. And there we go. And then we talked about in class how you can duplicate a layer by using the move tool, holding the alt key, getting that little icon there and clicking and dragging. And then you have two. And then again, if I wanted to make him facing each other, I right click after I control T and flip horizontal and then they're both looking at each other. All right. Never or now, when you resize, don't resize bigger. You know, you, you don't want to make this picture any bigger. It's already kind of blurry, but if I made it bigger, it would get even more blurry. So never resize up. And then finally, undoing. I told you you can go to edit and step backward, but it's probably easier to go to history, which is a panel you can use under window. And that gives you a list of everything that's happening. So here's all the things I've done today. So if I want to back up one step, just click in the gray space on the previous step. So that undid the free transform. Um, now, if I wanted to back up a whole bunch of steps because I just totally messed something up, you can skip a bunch and just go up and it gets rid of all of these. Just know that if you start to do new things, all of these temporary things are going to be gone. So if I do something new now like this, notice now that's the end of my timeline. So it's kind of like you started a new future and you can't use any of those previous things. The history is temporary, so when you close the document, you lose the history. So like the next day, you can't come in and undo something from the previous day. So that's the basic gist of the first note sheet. One other additional thing that I mentioned in class, because it was an issue for some, is if you accidentally download an image that saves as a J5 image. Now you have to do this from out here. So you go out to your drive, so you hit the file folder down here, go to your U drive, and find your pictures. So I would come out here, go to my U drive, find my Photoshop folder, and then go ahead and open up that folder. Um, so details is usually what this is set on. And if you see over here that you have a JFIF file, in this case, um, I don't have one. But if you had a JFIF file in here, then you would go ahead and right click to change the extension. But you can't do that if you can't see the extensions. So in order to see extensions under the View tab, over here where it says Show and Hide, you're going to uncheck. Uncheck File Name Extensions, and you don't see them. Check File Name Extensions, and you do see them. And then at that point, you can move forward. So if I needed to rename it, if it was a JFIF file, I'd right-click and rename. Where it actually says, like, JFIF, I would just back up and make it a JPEG. Now this does not work with any other file types. JFIFs are the only kind that you can do this to. But if you rename a JFIF JPEG, it should work beautifully. Jackson, All right, that's pretty much it. Um, and that should cover note sheet number one in Photoshop. And if you're still having trouble with this unit, it's critical that you get in here and get some help.